Hey everyone, Jeff McElwain here, and today I want to talk about using major and minor triads to come up with really cool guitar parts. The track that I'm playing over, which is available at the link above or the link below, is very similar to that of Chris Isaac's tune called Wicked Game. Chord progression is very, very simple. It's B minor, A major to E minor. Lots of tunes do this, so it's a really cool vehicle for us to experiment using these triad inversions. If you are not familiar with your triad inversions, I have two courses available, Mastering Major Triads and Mastering Minor Triads, and they are available at the link above and the link below for a special sale price. Okay, so let's get to it. So let's talk about the tone I'm using a little bit. I'm using a Stratocaster in between the bridge and the middle pickups, so I get that out of phase sound. And I have a lot of reverb on. Very clean guitar tone. It's right on the edge of breakups. If I hit really hard, kind of breaks up like a, I would like an amp, but if I play soft, you get that nice bloom on the notes. And then it really helps create the mood of a song like this with this part. I'm also using the bar to get some vibrato in the chords, which is really part of the sound as well. And to do this properly, you need your bridge to be floating. So that means my bridge and my guitar is sitting up a little bit off the body so I can pull in either direction. And that really gets us that nice floating sound where I can pull the bar in both directions, up and down. Now I have the bar very gently between my uh, pinky and middle finger and ring finger, as you can see. So I'm just gently pulling and pushing the bar very, very gently. And the bar will go in either direction when it's floating and it always comes back to its middle point. You get that really pretty sound. I can really accentuate it like, which can be really fun. A lot of people talk about these old kind of guitars, these old tuning pegs not staying in tune. They stay in tune just fine if you don't do the big kind of Van Halen dive bombs. As long as your guitar is set up right, they stay in tune great. The chord progression, like I said, is very simple. It's B minor to A to E. And the whole song basically does this. Brush with the Blues by Jeff Beck is very similar to this chord progression. So if you want to hear another tune that uses this, and Jeff Beck, of course, does some amazing stuff on it, and he also uses his triad inversions. So the first thing I want you to think about is what is a triad inversion? Well, a triad is a three note chord and a minor triad is the root, the flat three and the third. So if we just look, we already probably know a lot of this. If we look at a B minor chord, this is just a big B minor triad. We have repeated notes. This is gonna be the root, the fifth, the root, the flat three, the five and the root again. We can get to that later. This is gonna take some time. But if you just look at the top three notes of this chord, we can play that instead of playing a big B minor chord. Because if we're playing over a track or playing with a band, there's going to be a bass player, very often we don't want to get that big full sound. Right? This takes over, but if I went and played the top four strings. So we start with something very simple like this. Then I brought it down to the A major triad. So I looked at my A major bar chord on the fifth fret. Just played the top four strings again. Okay, so I have the B minor. Added some little bar in there. And then I went to an E major triad here in my first inversion. So if you're familiar with this shape, it's from a C form bar chord. If you look like a C chord, right? There's C, there's my root C, if I bring it up to D, and there's E, but I have to bar with the first finger to make the C move up. So it's like you're playing the C like this, right? So we just come up there, that would be D, and there's E. So once again, that's kind of big. I might not want to play that, so I'm going to play the top four strings. So if we check that out. just going down B minor to A major to E major. But when I first started playing guitar, I probably would have played an E major this way or an E major this way. I might not have thought to do this. And what happens is we get things, we get some voice leading and we can get some common tones between the changes. But the voice leading, this all moves down. All right, so we have my B, D, F sharp, and A. So you spell B minor. It's going to move down a whole step to the A major chord. A, C sharp, and E. So this B moved down to the A. This D moved down to the C sharp. 
with this F sharp from my B minor chord, move down to the E, my B, move down to the A. That's pretty simple, right? But now, I chose to go to this E major. And by doing that, we create a much more interesting part because the lines continue to move downwards, as opposed to something like this. That's not bad, of course, but this. We get something much prettier and much more, well, we get something cooler. We get something much more interesting. So let's move to another position and try the same thing. Let's go down here with our B minor, typical B minor, A major, to E major. Take my top three strings, A major, E major. So. Okay, now, interesting things that we can do. I don't have to just sit on that E. I can go to another inversion of my E major chord and maybe do that the second half of the, of the E chord. So watch. Right? So I can start to move around a little bit and that makes for a more interesting guitar part. Another cool thing is you can do is maybe move up. So there everything kind of went down, right? So I'm gonna play my B minor triad, the one we started with. And now I'm gonna to go to A major in the first inversion. A major is A, C sharp, and E. So I have the B minor triad to A major. Now I might go to that E right there. So that's another sound. Now I have this line that goes to the B minor. I go up to the A major. And I go to the E major here. So I now have a new line. Right? Then my second line here with the third string. And this line goes. cool, right? So what I can experiment with is going through all my triad inversions of those three simple chords in any direction I can think of. So here's a B minor. And maybe I'm gonna go up the A here. I'm gonna go to the E here. So I have B minor, A, E. B minor, A, E. How about I do B minor, B minor, B minor. So I'd have something cool like And all I did there was go through my triad inversions. So to show you all your triad inversions would obviously take a lot of time, so that's why I've got two courses that do that for you. Mastering major triads and mastering minor triads. You can get that a link above and below on a special sale price over at JM Guitar Lessons. But use the chord shapes you already know to start off. You know root on a six string B minor, you know, we root on the six string A major, and let's get this C form bar chord in, and that's the root on the fifth string E major chord. So I'm just gonna work off of that. So you come up with really cool lines as opposed to doing full B minor, full A major, full E major. So knowing these triad inversions are a great way to develop much more interesting guitar parts. And if you listen to something like Wicked Game or Brush With The Blues by Jeff Beck, they actually craft the melody of the song off of these chord changes as well. To understand the power of knowing your triad inversions and what it can bring about is just listen to the recording of Wicked Game with Jimmy Wilsey on guitar. 
and it's the guitar part is basically outlining the triads, but in such a beautiful, haunting way. It was one of the best guitar parts ever. It really influenced me. I remember when I first heard that song many, many years ago, and I thought, wow, this is just some of the coolest stuff I have ever heard. So if you're not familiar with the recording, please check it out. It's, it's the song that really broke Chris Isaac. Also, if you listen to Jeff Beck's Brush with the Blues, the melody of that song is based upon outlining this chord change. Also, when he's soloing, he is outlining the chord changes. So knowing your triad inversions isn't just for coming up with cool rhythm parts, it's also for really improving your lead guitar playing where you can outline the sounds of the chord changes. Okay, so I'm Jeff Mackerlane. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. Please like my channel, it really helps out quite a bit. And once again, I have my two mastering triads courses, mastering major triads course, mastering minor triads that will really help you with your triad inversions with examples and tablature, really no nonsense approach to getting these together. So until next time, I'll see you later.